What's happening team? Liam from Lazarus Personal Training and in this video I'm going to talk about why counting calories could be the key to either our weight loss or our weight gain. Regardless of whether we want to lose weight or want to gain weight, whatever we put into our body is crucial and we all know that. We all understand the impact and the difference that nutrition can make. But what I'm not here to do is tell you what diet to go on, what diet is best for fat loss, what diet is best for weight gain, nor am I gonna tell you to take certain supplements that are gonna help you on your route to weight loss or weight gain, nor am I saying that calorie counting is a diet, because it's not a diet. What calorie counting, what calculating our food is, is data collection. What we're doing is working out how much we are putting into our body on a daily basis. And the better data we have, the better understanding about what our results are. Can you lose weight without tracking? Well, absolutely, of course you can. Plenty of people have done it. If you go back in time, like people didn't have calorie counts of like how much a carrot was, but times have changed and we do have access to that and there is quantifiable scientific evidence that says counting calories and knowing where your calorie balance is helps us either lose or gain weight. So let's look at it from a wrestling point of view. We've had a match and we want to go back over it and, and assess and get better from that match. Now we could do that from memory and that's absolutely fine but we could watch the match back if it's taped, we can re-watch it, look at what we did and observe it from an external point of view. Or to go into real life, if you've got a car, what's easier to do? Put fuel in the tank and roughly gauge how much fuel you've used or have a number that's on your car that says you've got five miles left. I know what I would prefer. What I'm gonna go over is a couple of key areas that I think we need to take into consideration when it comes to tracking and a couple of little like tips that I use in terms of making that experience easier to deal with. So in terms of a tracking app, I use MyFitnessPal. No particular reason, I'm not endorsed by them. I know it has flaws, but for the most part, a lot of people use it and it's got a good database of food and it's just something that I have used. There are plenty of other apps out there and you might find that a different app works best for you. That's absolutely fine, but use an app and get comfortable with that app. I'm sure every app has its own benefit, but what I would say, especially for my fitness pal, which is what I'm gonna use for this video, you don't need the premium version of it. The free one will do exactly what you need it to do. Could you rain? any louder as a funny side tangent we asked uh, sienna my daughter the other day what do you hate so we went what do you hate and without a second's hesitation she just turned around and went motorcycles now i'm not saying that i have an impact in that sense however if you've watched my reactions to some of the noises that have happened outside you can probably see why she doesn't like motorcycles all right so we've downloaded the app what next well we need to track our food obviously and we need to track everything that we eat. And this is where we can sort of go two ways with it. Now, let's say for lunch, we're having a chicken sandwich. We could go onto my fitness pal, search chicken sandwich, and I can pretty much guarantee there would be a result that says chicken sandwich with so many calories by it. Sick. But is that your chicken sandwich? Things that we need to take into consideration. Yes, there's a filling, but then there's a the bread. Then if we use butter, have we had a drink with the sandwich? Did we have a bit of extra on the side? And then we can go deeper into it. What sort of bread have you used? How much butter did you use? How much filling have you used? There's a load of questions that come round of it and we can go as deep or as narrow as we want when it comes to tracking food. But remember, this is data collection. The better data that we have, the more accurate our findings will be. A bonus for my fitness pal is that you can scan food and I'm pretty sure you would be able to do it on other apps as well. But it means that if something has a barcode on it, you can spin it over, scan it, and then it pops up on your my fitness pal. Saves a lot of time and typing stuff in. You can get a decent idea of what the calorie count is from that barcode, but take into consideration the serving sizes. What the serving size is, recommended and what we might end up having could be two completely different things but i know full well that it made the experience of my fitness pal a lot easier by having that barcode scanner in as opposed to when it didn't another thing that my fitness pal does is it sets up your um your diary to have breakfast lunch and dinner so they're three elements that it puts in there now for some people that might be absolutely fine because they might have a breakfast lunch and a dinner 
But if your meal timings are slightly different from that, if you work different shifts and you don't particularly have a breakfast, a lunch or a dinner, you might find that slightly not off-putting, but it might not just fit with your current lifestyle, or you just might not enjoy being confined to those meals. For me, lunchtime is a specific time, and if I don't eat in that time, well, it's not lunch anymore. What I did was I went into my settings, I changed it so I just had one big box for my input, which meant that everything I was putting in just went in that list. That means that there's no difference between breakfast, lunch, and dinner, which, if we're being completely honest, there isn't. There's no difference between the food that you have in the morning and the food that you have on the night. It's all just food. And you could have cereal on a night or you could have a roast dinner in a morning. There's nothing to say that we need particular meal timings, especially not at this phase where we're just getting into tracking. Meal timing as a concept and as a way of implementing food comes way, way further down the list. But yeah, for me, I just have one box that I put all my food into and it takes that stress away from thinking about when I'm gonna put my food into timings. Because when it comes to food tracking, we want as little stress into it as possible. Another thing my fitness pal likes you to do is it likes to set goals for you. So when it pops up and you first implement it, it says, what is your goal? Do you want to lose weight? Do you want to gain weight? How much do you want to lose it by? How much do you want to gain it by per week? And as humans, we're greedy and we go, yeah, I'll lose two pound a week, no problem at all. But the problem is that is quite hard and it is hard to implement. And usually my fitness pal shoots out daft numbers when we go to those extremes. My advice on that front would be to ignore it. Just ignore whatever my fitness pal is saying in terms of these are the amount of calories that you should be consuming. Work out what calories you are consuming and then take a weekly average from that number because the number that you might be consuming might be completely different to the amount that it suggests that you should be eating. We need to work out what we are having and then adjust from there. My fitness pal is a tool that we use to get that number. It shouldn't be the guiding force. Again, to use a car analogy, when you put the address into a sat-nav, you don't just blindly follow the sat-nav, but you shouldn't do anyway. You should be aware of your surroundings. So the sat-nav is a tool to get you to that end point, but obviously, if the road is closed and it doesn't recognize it on the sat-nav, well, then you don't go down the road. And on the note of calorie targets and the calorie amount that we should be having, unless you weigh everything, every single bit of food that you have, there is no way that you can accurately, to the calorie, know exactly how much food you are taking in. And even if you do weigh everything, what happens if you end up losing a bit? What happens if a piece of that broccoli, like, falls on the floor and you have to put it in the bin? Do you have to recalculate however much you've had? No. So don't worry too much if your calories are out by 10, 20 calories being realistic they're probably out that much anyway and the same comes to a calorie total what i tend to advise and what i tend to go by is i'll round up to the nearest 100 or at least in that sort of range again 10 20 30 calories in that sort of region we're probably going to fall into that anyway if we think about our total calorie expenditure through the day one day you might be up active moving around constantly and the other day you just just might sit there those two days are completely different in terms of your calorie needs. So then, rather than recalculating that, I would use, again, a ballpark figure. Calorie counting is very much a guesstimate. So to invest in a number that's, say, 1,562 calories, we're never actually going to hit that number exactly. So to worry about it, and then let's say we go 1,563 calories, and we go gone over I've gone over I've gone over well that's it I'm just gonna go eat cake realistically we might have not gone over or we might have gone over before that point so again don't invest too much into the numbers it's to give you an idea of the data that you're consuming and then we need some comparative data for the most part I can pretty much guarantee nobody's tracking just for the sake of tracking it's not particularly a fun endeavor. We're usually tracking because we want to change our size, whether that be to gain weight or to lose weight. So we need another data point 
to compare the two to see if our calorie total is making a difference. So on that, it might be the scales, it might be circumference measurements, it might be progress photos that we're looking at, it might be how some clothes fit us, it might just be a general feeling that we have, but we need this comparative data point to see if our calorie total is making any sort of difference. Let's take it on a scale. So we stand on the scale and we are 90 kilo. We want to lose some weight. So we start tracking those calories and we work out that we are eating 3000 calories a day. I am totally throwing these numbers out. Don't put any investment into the numbers, but think about what they mean. So we eat 3000 calories a day. We then go back on the scale and that scale number hasn't changed. Okay, we know that that's our maintenance point. Now we end up eating 2,700 calories. We eat that for a week, we go back onto the scale and we have lost some weight. We might now be at 89 kilograms. That means that the redu reduction in calories corresponds with the reduction in weight class. That means that we're moving in the right direction. We keep that up for a couple of weeks and it keeps coming down, 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 up until the point where we suddenly get to 80 six kilograms we've been eating at 2700 calories and it stopped and it's plateaued for a week well then we need to reduce those calories down again so then we see the weight coming down and so on and so forth but we need those comparison points to sit together if we go on a different route and let's say we're looking at progress photos and that's going to be a longer term thing to follow so we might be tracking our calories for a month we take a photo and we go actually not really had that much change maybe i need to bring my calories up a little bit to gain a bit more mass and we take another photo and then we go actually yeah they do look different so the work that i've been putting in on my calories has corresponded to my progress photos there's a ton of different ways we can go about it and then to answer a question that i often get asked is how long do i need to track for well that's completely dependent on your needs and your wants and the amount of mental time that you can put into tracking you might find that tracking every single day helps you keep accountable and actually is way beneficial and you've just got into a pattern of tracking every day class that is not me for me i will track for a couple of days get a rough idea about the sort of food that i'm consuming get a ballpark number and then if i need to change it i can either eat more or eat less and i'll probably track that again to see if that's actually happening and then i'll i won't track but that's because i've had years of thinking about food and nutrition and exercise that i sort of have an idea about how much i'm consuming anyway if this is new to you then i'd suggest tracking for a longer time when i start with people i'll usually suggest track for a week two weeks and let's get a gauge on how much food you're consuming because for the most part people don't know how much food they're consuming like if they've never tracked before they might say like oh i don't eat that much but actually they might eat quite a lot or they go oh i eat loads and they don't eat enough so again, if you're coming into this new, I would say track for a week, two weeks, make the change that you need to make, maybe then track for another two weeks and see if you're going in the right direction. You could then go, actually, I'm gonna have a bit of a rest now. And if you continue down that track, sick, that's fine. But if you find that you go back on yourself, I would suggest again, going back into tracking. You might find that you only need to track on a couple of days. Maybe the weekend is a problem point for you. So with that, maybe track Saturday and Sunday. Now, if we track Saturday and Sunday, well, yeah, it feels a little bit like work. But if that's our problem point, then we need to take that in consider into consideration. Again, we are data collecting to go, well, I know I overeat on a weekend, but I'm not going to track on the weekend because it's the weekend. There is your problem. So with that, think about where you need to track. Do you need to do it every day? Do you need to do it on certain days? Do you need to do it for a long period of time, a short amount of time? But that is completely up to you. Again, I hope this video makes sense. I hope it highlights some areas that I think are important when it comes to tracking. And again, this isn't to say that counting calories is a diet. It isn't. It is a tool for collecting data. Once we have that data, we can do what we please with it. You could follow any diet in the world. You could have any supplement that you need. But at the end of the day, if we are eating more calories than we are burning off, we will gain weight. If we are eating less calories than we are burning, we will lose weight. Any way we go about doing that, it's completely up to you. If you've liked this video, give it a like, maybe share it with someone that needs to see this information. If you really like my content, subscribe to the channel because it massively helps. I've been Liam from Lazarus Personal Training and I will see you next time.